So anyway, we are in Genesis 24, starting at verse 1. All right, you're going to tell This me is a long one. This is an epic. You're going to tell me where to stop reading, or are we going to... Oh, we're going, going all the way through. Oh, we're going we're all doing the whole the whole, the whole thing is this happening. This is because I'm not Good morning, it. Donna. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because I have to take forever. <laughs> Chapter 24, beginning in verse Good. 1. Abraham was now old and well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, Put your hand under my thigh. I want to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I am living, but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. And the servant asked, What if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land? Then I shall take your son back to... Uh, uh, then uh, shall I take your son back to the country um, you came from? Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land and spoke to me and promised me an oath, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand under the thigh of his master Abraham and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Verse 10. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and left, taking with him all kinds of good things from his master. He set out for Aram Naram and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had uh, the camels kneeling down the, uh, near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, give me success today, and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside the spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please, let down your jar, that I may have a drink, and she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too, let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder. She was the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milka, who was the wife of uh, Milka. Mm -hmm, who was Good the man. wife of Abraham's brother Nahor. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled with her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, "Please give me a little water from your jar." Chapter uh, verse 18. Drink, my lord, she said, and she quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave a drink to him. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels, too, until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his uh, journey successful. Okay, for all of us who who uh, may have just joined us, we're in Genesis chapter 24, verse 22. 22 now. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring, weighing a becca, and two gold bracelets, weighing ten shekels. Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, son of Milcah, born to Nahor. And she, said, and she added, we have plenty of straw and fodder, as well as room for you to spend the night. Then a man bowed down and worshipped the, uh, the Lord, saying, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Praise be to the Lord and the God of my you master, Abraham, more. who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. Isn't that incredible? The girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Verse 29. Now Rebekah had a brother named Laban, and he hurried out to the man uh, at the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arm, and had heard Rebekah tell what the man uh, said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing, um, sorry, standing by the camels near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out here? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man, uh, so the man went to the house and the camels were unloaded. Straw and fodder were, uh, were brought for the camels and water for him and his men to wash their feet. Then food was set before him, but he said, I will not eat until have, I have told you what I have to say. Mm. Then tell us, Laban said. 
Verse 34. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly, and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep and cattle, silver and gold, men, men servants and maid servants, and camels and donkeys. My master's wife, Sarah, has borne him a son in her old age, and she has given him everything he, uh, he owns. And my master made me swear an oath and said, You must not get a wife for my son from the daughter of the Canaanites in whose land I live. But go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son. Then I asked my master, what if the woman will not come back with me? Mystery until I get the page turned. Verse 40. He replied, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angels with you and make your journey successful so that you can get a wife for my son from my own clan and from my father's family. Then when you go to my clan, you will be released from my oath even if they refuse to give her to you, you will be released from my oath. When I came to the spring today, I said, O oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you will please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I am standing beside a spring. If a maiden comes out to draw water, and I say to her, Please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Verse 45, Before I... Finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the springs and drew water, and, set, and I said to her, Please, give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulders and said, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. So I, I drank, and she watered the camels too. I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, The daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. Then I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised God, uh, the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get, grand, uh, get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, and if not, tell me so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethuel answered, This is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here's Rebecca. Take her and go, and let her become the wife of your master's son, as the Lord has directed. Verse 52. We're driving it home. <laughs> when, Abraham's, when Abraham's servant heard what he, uh, they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, Send me on my way to my master. Verse 55. But her brother and her mother replied, Let the girl remain with us ten days or so, and then you may go. But he said to them, Do not detain me now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. <laughs> Send me on my way so I may go to my master. Then they said, Let's call the girl and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, Will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with the nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands, and may your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the men. So the servant took, uh, uh, so the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac had come from Birlahai Beer Roi, for he was living in the Negev. He went out to the fields one evening to meditate. As he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camels and asked the servant, Who is the man in the field come, uh, coming to meet us? The girl must have had good sight. He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebekah. So she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. That's a great story. I love it. It's beautiful. It is such a beautiful so story, pretty. isn't it? Okay, so so this was an epic. and The coffee's done. And I'm the coffee's go. done. And so I'm going to try and get through it, but we're only going to hit the highlights on, on some of these things, although it's such a rich story, so full of history, so full of, of uh, good, 
awesome okay. stuff. Could you include but, some more details in the notes that we put on the website? Anyway, uh, yes. I mean, okay. I've I've got I've got some some good detail good. in there already. Okay, go ahead. She wants me to be more detailed. All right. I love detail. <laughs> okay. So ahead. some of the things to mention here. First off, uh, so Abraham feels like he's coming to the end of his life. That's why he sends his servant, who, by the way, his name is Eliezer, or at least it was 60 years ago. We don't know if this is the same guy Maybe or the not. same manservant. Maybe the same manservant. He's been with, apparently he's been with Abraham a long time, and Abraham trusts this guy, or he wouldn't have sent him to go find a, a son uh, from his family. Uh, Abraham doesn't want uh, Isaac to marry into the people of the land. So he sends him back to his family in order to find somebody for Isaac to, uh, he sends it back to his family to, to, for Isaac to find somebody to marry. Now realize that, that Abraham's not sending Isaac. And I think that's really important because Abraham is basically trying to uphold, I'm sure that Isaac out there without his mom, without his dad now, is going to feel very insecure. And so sending possibly Isaac... Possibly hormonal, yeah. possibly make an immature decision. Right, so sending Isaac back to the family would have been, it would be like a college kid going back home. I just want to be home. Just let me be home. So, you know, the, uh, the idea was that they were trying to keep Isaac in the promised land. Realize Isaac never left the promised land. Right. Isaac was born in the promised land, but also he never had a home. He... he always you know they were always unsettled he was always nomadic yeah the people so, of god at this point are nomadic right so okay so he sends this servant out to go and find rebecca which is actually a cousin but so anyway we'll move on, we'll move on from there but <laughs> so uh the servant goes out he uh he stumbles upon um uh the the house you know he he gets there i'm sure he's tired i'm sure he's He's thirsty, but he does this great thing where he begins to pray and he says, Lord, if, if you're going to move here, Lord, if you're going to be, if you're going to be in the midst here, here's the, here's what I need to see. So he outlines to the Lord, here's, here's how I'm going to know that you're guiding me. And then the Lord provides, and it says, even before he finished praying, the Lord provides. Now I want to, I want you to look at something yeah. real quick here. There's some, there's some great detail here. First off, I think it, I think it's interesting that when we pray within the will of the Lord, we know that the promise of God here spoken is that uh, Isaac would be part of this promise to propel the people of God into the future. They're going to be as numerous in the stars. So this guy is not praying amiss. He's praying within the will of God. He's saying, Lord, please provide somebody here. And we know that Abraham's direct direct uh, um, desire was don't get from the pagan people, but get from the people that I came from that has a leaning towards fearing the Lord. And also... Um, also, I'm so sorry. I just blinked. You said, "What did you say before that?" Uh, don't don't pick from the pagan people, but pick from my people who have a he uh, leaning towards uh, towards uh, believing in the Lord. Yeah, continue on. Okay. Bring it up. So so he uh, b uh, before he even finishes praying it, God has already seen ahead of time. He's at the intersection, and he makes the he makes the the thing happen. Realize that the provision of God is sometimes. Uh, an indicator of God's desire. Yes. Okay. And also, the the servant was praying in submitted authority. He had he obeyed everything his master said. He was praying. He was praying under the submission of the authority of his master. And there's and I'm not talking about slavery or having man servants or maid servants. I'm not addressing that. But I am saying that Paul says even if you're a slave, submit. So that so that they may see the kindness and of the Lord, and so that yeah. and so the Lord in that moment also honors the submission of that servant, who um, who does exactly what his master asks. Yeah. So sometimes you know where uh, where where the where there's water, <laughs> that's where the Lord is providing something. Now that's not all the time uh, all, all the case. Sometimes God will send us out into places where it looks like there's nothing and he will create a way. Um, but uh, uh, over time, or he'll he'll test our obedience and then it'll happen. But this servant had no need for test of obedience. He, he was obeying his master mm -hmm. already. Okay, 
So then he sees Rebecca. Rebecca comes out, uh, comes out, draws some water. All pretty the girl. signs line up, huh? That's a pretty girl. Yeah, she, you know, she, apparently she's a very beautiful woman. So he takes out his uh, his earring. Now, okay, so it says nose ring in this version, but that Hebrew word for ring uh, or piercing actually could mean nose ring, earring. So some sort of ring that goes in some sort of orifice. Yes, it's some kind of some kind of, and realize that nose rings weren't outside of the normal at that time. Uh, the Ishmaelites, um, we know, wore nose rings. So anyway, just a, just a bit of information. So, um, so he puts basically the riches of his master, because these aren't his riches, realize that he's an he's a owned individual, but he takes the riches of his mas master and gives it to the girl. Well, the girl goes home. Her brother Laban goes, okay, where'd you get the, where'd you get the jewelry from? <laughs> And Laban, being a smart uh, businessman, runs out to meet this guy and says, Hey, what are you doing here? Where's where's all the money from? This is my sister, pal, and this is Brutus. <laughs> so anyway, so he, he finds out the whole deal and begins to work out, hey, yes, we'll send the send the girl. What I think is great and what is a real big faith step for Rebecca is that they have this conversation. Um, it seems like Rebecca or Laban is going to pull out of the arrangement. You know, it would have been one thing if Laban said, yes, sold. I will send my sister with you and, and you guys go. That would have been one thing. But they left the decision up to her, which I think is a real great part of this story. She yeah, takes a faith it. step in this moment and says, and she haven't, she's never even met the guy. And she takes a faith step and says, yeah, I'll go. So she jumps into it and says, hey, you know the the Lord will take care of us, and 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 the Lord obviously created the intersection between me and this man. So I'm going to trust the Lord's leading in order to go into this unknown. Yeah, and so she takes the faith step uh, and goes with the with the, with Eleazar, and they're headed back to now to Isaac. Now I think it's interesting the word meditate here when they come up on Isaac. Isaac is out there meditating. It actually thinks to it actually um, the word means to ponder pensively, um, and those are big words that basically means that he was thinking. I think, yeah, I think what we're, what we're actually seeing here is we are seeing Isaac, first off, his mom's died, so there's that, um, and he's probably in a, still in a time of trying to process all this, and then he's seeing Abraham start to decline in health, so Isaac is seriously beginning to... Uh, he's wrestle, yeah, he's young. He's, he's young. beginning to wrestle with what this is going to mean for his life as well. It's interesting that the that the scripture gives us that picture. I mean, like he gives us a Luke Skywalker staring out at the two sons of Tatooine moment, where he's like, you know, he's like, "What's my life going to be like?" Okay. You know, <laughs> but, but I mean, he's extremely young for someone to be the master of his household, to be the patriarch. He's extremely young yeah. to have his mother dead. You know, people. People, unless there was sickness or catastrophe, people who were that young still had their mothers alive. And um, and so he's fixing to have to be the master of his own household. Yeah. I say household. He's going to be the master of his own stuff. Um. <laughs> well, I, look, I mean, Abraham had, had a fighting force of 300 men. a huge men. responsibility. Yeah, he's got, he's got a big responsibility. In he's front got of an him. army. Okay, so then the most beautiful picture happens. So they it. come up on a Rebecca, sees him off in the distance, staring pensively up at the sky. I mean, it's 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 this is seriously a ro romance story, and uh, and Rebecca covers herself with her veil. Now we know, of course, that the veil at that time was to symbolize purity uh, and humility, uh, and so what she's doing is she's basically as the as the bride coming to meet her groom for the first time puts the veil over her face. That's actually where we get the tradition of the veil today to symbolize the, the veil of purity and humility during, uh, during the wedding ceremony. The uncovering of that is the intimacy in the situation. So I just thought that was really interesting. Uh, she covers herself with her veil and meets her husband for the first time. So beautiful interchange. Uh, there and I think it's a word picture uh, and it's a prophetic picture uh, for for what will happen when we meet Christ. You know everything that we see in the Old Testament and all the prophecies—they're all an archetype. They're all a picture. Hearkening. 
they are a hearkening, yes, like to uh, to the the story of Christ and His church. Yes. I mean, it, it really is. It all rounds out the story, the pictures. Th- this is part of the love story of God. That 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 the the Father sent a servant to find a bride for for His only Son. And that it's it's the fulfillment of the promise, and here comes the bride dressed in purity. The, well, the bride said, "The bride said, my husband has come for me. Let me go." You know, yeah, she didn't. She delay. makes she the said, faith step. Go. She makes the faith step and moves I towards him, and uh, and uh, comes in purity and humility, and they find each other. And though they were <laughs> afar off, they come close to one another, oh, and that. they they love each other, and. The promise is fulfilled. The promise is fulfilled, and the the prophecy is uh, is followed through with. So anyway, I just that's a really great picture. This is just a picture of the kind of relationship that the Lord wants with us. You know, mm-hmm. he he sent his servant Christ to call out for us, um, and so. And if I will, they were immediately married. They were, you know, it wasn't like she lived among them until. She knew him well enough to be married to him. It was yeah. like they were immediately married. Yeah. Now arranged marriages weren't a, weren't a uh, an alien thing at this point. No, they weren't. But realize that arranged marriages usually take place from birth, and they usually have a long time to sort of uh, figure the everything out. This yeah. is a this is a huge leap yeah. into this in this situation. And there's a lot at stake with this because. Because Abraham's promise trickles down to his son Isaac, where he says that you'll be the father of many nations. And so the wife has to be very responsible with the promise as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's so pray. Lovely. And, I, you know, there's some great themes that I think Jesus. we can pray through, uh, pray through in the scripture here. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that you we hear us. So like Eliezer, you Jesus. hear us when we pray. And even before we're you finished praying, you Lord, you are at work Lord. because we pray within thank your you, will. Jesus. Because your will is to you bless are, us. You your will is to increase us you as you kind. did with, uh, with, with Abraham you and with Isaac. And Lord, provides. we thank you that you're listening to us when we pray. You're listening. Your, your ear is leaned towards us. God, you're so kind. What am I? Who am I that you would listen to me and that you would love me enough to give me exactly what I need? And Father, to provide for me as you did in this moment. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you that you see us, Lord, and that you have chosen us and that you've picked us out, Lord. Yeah. Thank you that you've written the story of our life, Father. Mm-hmm. And thank you that you love us enough, Lord, that you would that you would um, pick us out to be the, the groom. I mean, yeah. to be the bride yeah. or the bridegroom. Yeah. Jesus, we prepare ourselves for you today. Mm -hmm. Jesus, I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would make us ready for you to be joined with you. Lord, I pray that you would make us a spotless bride today. We, we, your people, we, your church. Father, I pray that you would make us a a spotless bride. Lord, I I thank you that you have adorned us. Lord, that you have put your seal of ownership on us. Uh Lord, not in a possessive way, even though you are a jealous God, but you're jealous because you love us so desperately. Yes, Lord. But you've put your seal of love and ownership over us. You've put your... You've put your promises over us. Yes, Jesus. And so today we join with you and we say, yes, we'll go. Yes, we'll go. We'll go with you, Jesus. We'll go wherever you tell us to go. We will follow you no matter where you lead us. And we will be your people and you will be our God. Yes, Jesus. So today, Lord, as we renew our promise with our words, Father, may we... May we live in the bountiful blessing of your presence. Yes, Lord. May we live in your presence as we renew our promise to you. Father, right now we, and I and I hear this, Father, I hear you speaking this to the people that are watching this broadcast right now, that you may be calling them to go. That, it, that, that they don't know necessarily what they may be walking into, but that you're asking somebody to take a faith step today mm-hmm. to show their desire mm-hmm. to be with you, to show your, their desire to be a part of your will. 
And so, Father, right now we answer that call uh, call for you to say, come to me, my bride, come to me. Even though you don't know what's going to happen, even though your steps aren't, uh, are, aren't you don't understand exactly the steps to take, you just want us to yield ourselves to your will. And so, Father, right now I yield myself to your will and I say, I will go, Father. Yes. I will go. I will take the faith step into yes. the unknown in order to accomplish what it is that you want to do through me mm -hmm. and to be completely devoted to you, yes, Lord, Lord Jesus, as your bride. And so I say, go. I, I say, I will go. I will go. I will take that faith step yes. and I will enter into a relationship with you, Lord Jesus. I also hear the Lord saying, "Look out on your circumstances and look on, look out on what it is the Lord need want, uh, uh, that you need the Lord to to accomplish." And just like Abraham spoke confidently, even though he had no clue of how the situation would play out in the natural, he spoke confident confidently in the supernatural. He spoke that that the Lord would provide, and the Lord reminded me that because we are His children. That when we take a candy bar off the shelf, he's got the storehouses in, of heaven in order to pay for it. And so yeah. the Lord says, speak out and proclaim, declare in the natural and decree in the supernatural what it is that you need for him to accomplish. And, and as long as it is in his will and in his within his word, that he will accomplish it for you. And so today we declare and decree the things that you um, yes, Lord. that you have promised us, yes, we Jesus. speak them out of our mouths in faith, yes. Lord, knowing that you are going to bring them to pass. We expect to see, I anticipate the inevitable supernatural miracle of God. I yeah. anticipate it today, yeah. Lord, as I speak it out. All right, and before we leave... Uh, what a, what a great chapter! It's just it's it's fantastic. It almost brought me to tears when she got <laughs> off her camel and got herself ready for him. And when you start reading between the lines <laughs> of scripture, you start to really see the humanity of these individuals, um, and and their desire to do what God wants to do, but their extraordinary lives that they lived. But let me just pray over you guys the blessings that that these ladies prayed over their sister. And I think it's a great blessing because I think it plays exactly into the promise that God has for you. Who was Laban? Uh, was it? So they sent Rebecca on the way home, so Abraham's servants, and, and they blessed Rebecca. So the nurse and, and, all, and the sisters and all that. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, let, me, let me pray the blessing over you. May you increase yes. to thousands upon thousands. May your may your situation increase. May your job increase. May your favor. may your dreams, may your favors, you may your kingdom dreams and favor increase yes, in to thousands upon thousands. In the name of Jesus. And may you in the name of Jesus. and your children and your children's children the the possess the gates of your enemies. Yes. We, uh, Lord, I pray strength over my friends yes. and victory. Remember, you're, you are the victors oh, and not the uh, victims. You are the champs and not the chumps today. Yes. All right, guys. Have a great Wednesday. Have a great, I Wednesday. don't know what it is. It it's is Wednesday. Wednesday. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you guys. See you later.